Okay, we'll start. Maybe a short meeting, we'll see, depending on demos, because I haven't worked. Uh, let's see what uh, we need to talk about. Um, I'll be sharing my screen. Sharing screen, stop. Uh, Benedict, tell me when you can see something. Yeah, you see me because I I I, I clicked on the wrong button. I click on my camera instead of the share. My screen is more pixel perfect than my face. It's okay. not even loading for me yet. Okay. Loaded now. Okay, so um, I have some great points here to talk about. First thing, Antoine is an MVP. Were you MVP before? Waiting. The question is, were you MVP before? The question, the answer seems to be longer than is an MVP, wasn't it? MVP, VB, oh, VB seven years, seven years ago. Okay. So it's new. You are newly uh, elected MVP. And he said because of his orchard um, submissions. Uh, now ASP. Okay, great. So you are not, you are now in the, uh, in the internal mailing list with the MVPs. Um, and I, I think this is um, a, cons a consequence of the of what Scott Hunter said at uh, the Harvest Conference, that they will take into account the contributions to open source tools and uh, everything that Microsoft is doing as open source. Um, let me see. Yeah, so he's pointing to a link about it. Changes in the Microsoft MVP program MVP for contributions. Okay. I okay, can someone blog about it. Um, that's good. Great. So I retweeted it. So if you want to be MVPs, just do what Antoine is doing and you will be. It, it's easy. You see, even them guys can be MVPs. So easy. But, so what did you do? Did you submit all your patches and uh, um, contributions to whatever you did, modules and everything. Okay, good. Yeah. So whenever you do something and want to be an MVP, write it down. It can be useful. Uh, great. And you're, you're the first one, as far as I know, with that. Do you know if they have other MVP members which have been elected because of their uh, open source contributions? Okay, you'll answer later, John. The Code Junkie, April 9. So you're not the first one, but it's coming on. Cool. So this was the first topic I wanted to talk about. I released 181. So now it's available everywhere. I just released it um, um, an hour ago or something like this. Uh, so now it's the default download, 181. Um, I made today's date as the release date. I've updated the, the, the main website with the current version. 
and um, this should still be the web platform version should still be 1.8 because they need to push it i've asked them to do so um release notes with all the bugs which were fixed all the main bugs which were fixed because there's a link here for everything and uh, this is the usual i have also included um, everyone who submitted a patch or did a commit if i missing your name just re please remind me uh, it's possible that i've missed some some of you uh, i think there are some new names here this was a small release but there are some new names uh, this one voschik gadzinski so he's new in the committers list um the well, pretty usual list of uh, contributors um, yep. I could also mention the ones who participate in the forum and uh, helping for other matters, but I had to do it this time. I could mention Christian and uh, Sean for their work and some other I must be missing. Um, oh, yeah, we need to talk about this. So, 181 is available. Um, I didn't see any bug impacting wine. 8.1 last, during the last week. Um, so just as a reminder, so actually I had to do something very nasty, which is that I reverted the two commits that uh, Zoltan or Benedek uploaded during last week on 1.8.x. I reverted it and they have to reapply it on 1.8x but the current 18x because now 18x has been merged into master because now it's the the main release and i also then merge master into 1.x so that all the changes in 18x are also on 1.x and uh, but if you want to apply new bug fixes you start from 18x which is master right now or maybe it's no more actually i haven't checked Let me see. Pulling remote origin when it takes pull. So you haven't pushed this yet. Okay, so that you and nobody else. Okay, so one eight X is brand brand new, clean one. one. Um, and again, new features on one dot X. Okay, so that's it. Um, let me see if Daniel or Sipke are connected. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel is not connected. And Sipke is there. Okay. Um, so what's new on the... Oh, no, let's talk about this before I'm writing it down. Studios. Oh. Um, Benedek, would you like to talk about the localization and what's new? I've seen some things appearing during last week. What's going on? Well, um, there's nothing really groundbreaking at the moment. There are four complete translations, which is kind of cool. Um, Spanish, simplified Chinese, French, and Hungarian. I think that's it. <laughs> OK, good. Um, Klingon, who created that? Uh, oh, they are Chris, all there because Christian. I see la Latin. Oh, yeah, Christian asked, asked me to add uh, Latin and Klingon. Okay. Zero um, percent. Uh, French, more, okay, wow. Right. Chinese, French, and Guyan, Spanish approved. I need to play with it. Okay, it's good. Arabic, check. So if I go on the project itself, okay, you updated that, okay, with the links to what? Oh, so you compile them with a button. Did you do the, the automatic uh, compilation? 
Oh uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, we have a build configuration in our team city to trigger uh, okay. an automatic build every hour. Um, okay. Yeah, automatically. Do you want to it here? Yeah, I wanted to ask if we can move it to the um, to the to orchard. Yep. I can give you a power shot sure? script. It's it's very lightweight. I don't know to con I don't know how to configure it, but I'm sure it's doable. Um, um, but can you can you add me to this project? I I'm, I don't know. I, I will try. I don't know because I I'm not an administrator. I just have the rights on this project, so I don't know. I will check. Okay, if I can add someone else. I'm not sure. Okay, I okay. would. Um, okay, thank you. What I miss? What about Hodor? What is Hodor? Or is it nothing related to? Uh, do you watch Game of Thrones, Sebastian? Sorry? Do you watch Game of Thrones? No. Because Hodor is from there. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. Yep. No, actually. <laughs> I've seen the first episode. I'm waiting it to be, yeah. My Netflix uh, DVD queue is full. I mean, and I don't have cable, so I can't watch it. Um, Okay, so status. So I'm going on now with the status. If I go back here in one, so nothing has been done in 18x, but the two change set that Zoltan will apply back, which are removed. Um, and if I go there. Don't validate password inputs and change password. Okay, I think we talked about it last time. Um, and we have a bunch, so I wanted to talk about this actually. Um, so this is from Daniel. He made the cloud media uh, file name editable. I haven't checked that, but it should be fine. It's breaking the build right now, I assume, because when I go on Team City, the bill is broken because of that. So maybe he missed a, a file. Let me see, improved medium product experience. I think he's missing a file. Um, what is interesting though, is that we have here on this page, three different feature branches from one that takes. One is audit trail, this is the oldest one, um, from Sipke and Daniel. Um, if they, had been in the meeting, I would have asked them to do an update on that, but they are not. Um, because I think the release date should be in July, somewhere in July. So it should be available pretty soon. And because I've been working on that, actually it might already work. And the two other ones are very also interesting. This one by Sipke, who is trying to um, work on a dynamic layouts module. And I assume you're aware of that because it's working also sometimes at your office for you. Um, so I don't know how it's going on, but he's been working on that on a different branch. So we'll be able to see that at some point. It's public, so you can try, that, try and try that. I haven't tried yet. Uh, and uh, Bertrand is working on a deployment module, so he has uh, taken back the work from Damien Clark, who can't do Orchard work anymore. He's uh, working on iOS right now, and uh, he, he wasn't able to continue the, the code. So I assume Bertrand is continuing the work for it. Um, still no speaking. Um, okay, nothing interesting. Uh, so if you guys want to talk about these modules, if you have more information, you can talk. I know some of you have more information, know what you can say about it. Um, and nothing interesting here. Okay, so this is this is on the one that takes branch. So hopefully we could have a one dot nine with audit trail and layouts and deployments module. That would be really, really awesome. 
and it's the DC public, so you can follow the the work, try it, and and give some feedback to them. Let's see how it goes. Um, that's it for the status. I haven't done anything at all, but the release. I assume yes, that's it. I haven't done anything at all. Um, that's it for the status. Any questions, comment? Well, yes, so, um, good question. We have dedicated branches. So why that? Um, we have dedicated branches because it's better to have dedicated branches. In case we want to release 1.x without this specific branch, you remember last year we worked on the media and the workflow at the same time, and there were new features, and we were blocked from releasing 1.7 uh, because of these two features or one or the other because it was not ready and they were on the main 1.x branch so they were blocking because they were not fi finalized so working on by working on a different branch we can decide not to take the branch or to postpone it for the next release and uh, it's also interesting to make branches on all short core because it's public it's not a fork that you own, but it's on the public repository, so anyone can see what's going on and they don't have to, to create a, another clone. Um, I'm not saying you said it's bad, I'm just explaining why and all the benefits for that. And, uh, and yeah, so the, the only ones who can create branches are the ones who have commit rights on the repository. Uh, there are a few, and but if you want, to work on a very specific feature that we would take in in the next version, um, and and we can trust you, then then we can add you to the to the repository too. Um, so the question Antoine, your admin theme is on the branch. Yeah, one day. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Antoine could create it on a on different branch. That's not an issue at all. And uh, we so they followed the convention, which is the feature the branch name being called feature slash layouts. Um, yeah. So that's it. Feature slash name of the feature. So it's it's uh, impersonal, so there is no name inside a branch. So it's not uh, linked to a, to a specific person, but and, uh, and it's very specific what it is about. Um, and they are based on 1.x because it target the next uh, major version. And they might require sometimes some new features that we will need to include in one of the text. My uh, suggestion is that if you have branches like that and you want to work on it, to be able to follow the development and one of the text, and I suggest you to follow the development and one of the text to not to have to manage in the end and have lots of um, conflicts to, to fix, is to rebase the branch uh, every so often based on rebase it on one dot x so for instance this one let's take the old the oldest one uh, this one you see one dot x is here but this one has done a branch on one dot x very long ago and um, and the cool actually rebase right now is work on top of one dot x so there is no surprise with all the files we add continuously in one text. Yeah, just a little note. Um, Nick, do you have a branch for TinyMC4? Uh, TinyMC4 is actually on 1.x, um, but the templates work. Oh, it's not a branch. Um, huh? No, 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 no. Um, I upgraded TinyMC4 uh, for like for like replacement. Um, but the new features that I want to push into the MC4 will be on a branch. Okay. Or well, you could have done everything on a branch or two branches. Uh, the MC4, yeah. I didn't see. I didn't see well, any need for it. But, if yeah. there is, well, if it works, there is no breaking change. It's not risky and it's done. Yeah, I'm just a like for like replacement, so it wasn't really too bad. Okay. Okay. I will see. Um, yeah, maybe that will be interesting next week because we don't have that much work on one that takes going on on dev branch because I'm 
vacation to to demo this, these new features, these new these new branches. Uh, I will ask Daniel for the trail if we can, and um, we'll ask Sipke if it's ready to be demonstrated the layouts and get wrong about the de deployment. That would be nice to see the, what's going on because even myself I haven't been able to to follow the work. Great. Um, okay, what else? This was about the statue. Any questions about these branches, the current work? It, it, can, it kind of follows what we talked about, about uh, from, based on um, um, next features we want in the next major version. So we talked about uh, so layouts, deployment, and um, layout deployments, and audit trail, REST API is so something to do, and a few others. But that, that's good. What about loop.net, Nick? Have you ever seen um, loop.net? Do you know what it is? Yeah, I'm using it. I've been using it for years. So um, I have a module that services mm -hmm. kind of what loop.net does, but in Orchard. Oh, good. Um, so, but obviously for Lucene, um, I don't know whether I can, I haven't tried to plug Elasticsearch, my Elasticsearch module into it yet, but we'll see. Um, but I'll, I'll demonstrate what I have next week. Great. So your Elasticsearch module is a, is, could replace the Lucene yep, module? Yeah, it does. Okay. And she's in Elasticsearch. Have you read the article about uh, Elast Elasticsearch, how it fails, load? Uh, I haven't read that. The, no. Okay, look, look at on I can use. One of my friends has got um, 90 million um, records or something in it, but um, read I have the article. Read the article. It's very interesting. Okay. Look on Hacker News. There was an article two weeks ago about Elasticsearch. But it just sits on top of Lucene, so. Um, yep. Yeah. 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 And but read the article about the promises of. Um, Elasticsearch and what it actually delivers. One thing I really like about it, which I think we should um, we should learn from and maybe put into Orchard, is the way they configure Elasticsearch. Um, you know, all around analyzers and um, and all all that lot. I think we should we should look at their yeah. oh, yeah, configuration and see if we can if we can implement something similar in uh, Orchard. We really agreed on that, being able to customize the uh, analyzers at least. Yeah. Um, good, but I think Elasticsearch is a nice solution. We need that for, yeah, for instance, in weblogs.asp.net, I need a solution like this because I can't have 750 different indexes on the file system. I need it, I need it as a service. Um, uh, you, should be able, you should be able to plug into Solar or um, something along those lines, right? So maybe maybe a module for Solar would be better. Yeah, but have it also also hosted somewhere in Asia? We'll see. Is, uh, has, has, has Azure got one? No, but we could have a VM. We will need a VM. But yeah, that's another topic. Um, okay, so this is about loop.net. So time C loop.net. Okay, what did I? So any other question about the the current branches, the work going on? I see Bertrand has joined. We just talked about the development branches that are open on the repository deployment uh, layouts and the trail. Um, okay. And what else? This is done. Videos, I think Ilan is not here. Ilan is here. Ilan, any news on the videos? I, I, I know last, last week you asked me to, to review your email. I did, I think. You're muted if you listen. Okay, maybe you can do it. Took yeah. me a second just to get unmuted. Yeah, no, um, the videos uh, were too large and they were sent via, we, it was a complicated process, but um, the team at Microsoft is very helpful. They're mailing them to me so I can upload them uh, as soon as I review them. Okay. Yeah, I'm just asking because people are pinging even internally in Microsoft about the videos when they will be available. That's it. Good. 
okay, this is about the videos. Status done. Um, so anyone has a demonstration to do today? Yeah, <clears throat> a short one. Cool. No code, just demo. Yeah. Actually, I will, I will show some HTML code. <sighs> uh, but I hope that uh, that won't get anybody's stomach upset. Uh, let me know when you can see my screen. Now, anybody? Benedek? No, I can join the presentation. Mm, I, I rejoin, okay? Just okay, uh, anybody with uh, uh, major jokes on the chat? Administrative uh, uh, area? We have uh, some lag. Uh, sorry? We have some lag between what you say and the video. Okay. Uh, then I I'm, will get to a checkpoint and then um, wait everybody to <laughs> to catch up there. Uh, so what you should see now is uh, two source codes. One source code, uh, the left one from the admin side, and the right one from the front end of this side. And uh, the entertaining mental exercise here would be what's the, what's the main difference? Um, it's in the static resources, but um, if you have, if you are experiencing a lag, then uh, probably you can't even see what I'm showing now. <laughs> we can see the uh, two screens. Sorry? We can see the two strings. Screens. Okay, great. So, uh, the, so the point here is about static resources. Um, and I will just uh, tell the punchline. And that is that on the left-hand side, what the administrative side is, you see that uh, uh, that's the static resource is coming from the from under default, the media slash default, <clears throat> because it's um, it's stored in the media. Uh, uh, resources, static resources processed by Combinator. On the right-hand side, you can see that it's stored under media slash native Hungarian. So. Uh, it's quite apparent that um, on the left-hand side we, we see resources coming from the default tenant because this is a multi-tenant setup, of course. And on the right-hand side we, we see a static resource loaded from the media folder of this specific tenant. Now, the interesting thing here is uh, that this is a form of sharing resources between tenants uh, through the default tenant, actually. So um, there were also uh, a few discussions in the forum how to access other tenants' uh, content or how to share content between tenants now in a, in a multi-tenant setup. Now this is a case where uh, where I've done it, and the point here was that uh, because as you may know, combina the combinator module bundles and minifies static resources like uh, style sheets and scripts. The point was that uh, to to mitigate the performance impact of this bundling and minification, uh, I've created an extension that lets common resources, like the, the ones on the admin side, uh, be shared between tenants. Because on the admin side, pretty much on every tenant, it's, the, it's just the same, same set of style sheets and same set of uh, JavaScripts. So those should be only processed once, and then every tenant can use those common sets of resources. Um, uh, check out the source. It's uh, it's up in the repository. Uh, well, yeah, actually, this was the the work item that that describes what the, the aim here was. Um, so, if you if you want to see something uh, about content sharing, this is uh, this is probably an, an interesting read done in the source. Good. So, That's great. Thanks for watching. Thank you. That's good. We might have to talk about when we want to integrate it in the core. Some point makes sense. Um, this would be interesting. Yeah, as a module, at least. Um, good, good. Sean, you said you wanted to show, the, to show us something. Go on. Hello? We can hear you. OK, I'm not yelling. That's good. Uh, share screen. Click. Desktop. Go. All right. 
Uh, okay. Sharing a monitor? I like your haircut. Yeah, so does my wife. Much more beautiful so, like this. Yeah. So Even one of the... more beautiful like this, sorry. <laughs> you won't be able to do your demo. That's all right. I'll just sit here and look pretty. Um, can you see? Not yet. Not yet. I can. One of the topics at the harvest was lack of themes, despite having lots of modules. And so I'm working on ways to ease theme development. Uh, the module that you'll see when it comes up, if it comes up, is just a way of showing the widgets, the zones, and the topology of a theme and being able to select among them. Uh, so when it comes up, just let me know. Yeah, I think I have to rejoin uh, for some reason, but just give me, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 seconds. And this is helpful because if I want to see what it looks like with just triple one, two, three, I get to see my layout with just the triple one, two, three. And if I want to see it with the quad one, two, three, four, uh, there it is. You can see the four zones or the four widgets. Um, also, if you just have the full width, you can see it with the full width. I think this will be useful because now if I bring up another theme like the PJS Bootstrap and apply it, we can see the general structure of the PJS Bootstrap and get a sense of what our theme is going to look like with the different um, zones being fulfilled or not. So I'm going to continue working on this, and hopefully it'll make uh, theme development a little bit more straightforward. It's definitely helping me to understand uh, theming better. So that's all I have to present. Thank you. Yeah. Interesting. Can you share the link to the source? Yeah, I can. It's on the gallery. So it's just a module on the gallery called, I'll, I'll share it in just a moment. Makes me think that you could take over the shape tracing and make it better at stuff like this. I actually looked at shape tracing for inspiration, so it's, Good. I, yeah. Make it extensible and extend it. So many new modules in this gallery. <laughs> Lots of new modules every day. Okay, good. Um, well, there was a guy complaining yesterday on that, Twitter. That, that, yeah, that was my little joke. <laughs> that the gallery is dead. The more, the, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Some modules have been done for years because they are done. They work. Beautiful. I know some product at Microsoft that hasn't, haven't been updated for years and still everyone using it. So that means it's dead. It just works. Um, okay, any other demo today? No other demo. So let's go just see the bugs, if there are some interesting bugs. Okay, no reviews yet. Well, nice reviews for the last one. Eight nice five star ratings. Um, issues. So um, I have created a new release 18x. The previous one, the previous 18x has been renamed 181. Okay, and all the bugs which were not closed or resolved have been reassigned to 18x. So these ones are open, um, active. Um, so we'll look at the signed, proposed. Are you sharing screen, Sebastian? No. Because I should I? see Sean's screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, maybe. No, sorry. I forgot. Don't make fun of update panel. The author is in the meeting.
And it was pretty slick. I liked it when I was doing work forms. I was using it. People are still using it. Can you see it, Benedict? Okay, I can see your screen now. Thank you. So, proposed and assigned. Uh, media library is extremely slow. I have one already for that. Um, so I will say it's a duplicate, but I'd like some repro. This is not, yeah, but maybe the repro is just to use it. No clue, exceptions, I think. Yep, so in this one I have already open. Um, yep, and it's high.a.x, so I will say it's a duplicate. But I agree. Could, could we start with the oldest um, issues? Because we have issues from December and November. <laughs> OK. Let me check this one. The URL for the V1 release notes is incorrect. Ah. OK, I'll check it and fix it. Um, so issues. Update. One November. November. Wow. Um, Brett always showing home. Again, for those who listen, it's not because I made it active that the fix is valid. It might be the wrong fix. So don't take it blindly if you want to take it. Media um, library picker not working with some mobile browsers. Um, the content is now. If we can. It, let's fix it. No, I don't agree with this one. This has already been open. This was a kind of a breaking change at some in some point. So um, in Ultra, you will find this line of code. Oh, needs to be no, 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 no. A content type store. If you actually just try to search for the content type, you will find you can never actually find anything. The reason is that the information is stored with capital letters because when you are um, nope, I don't agree. Um, uh, so. Actually. We need to change the way we search, well, the way we pass that, the query in. Let me, yeah, and I will explain why I don't agree. We were, so, the content type is a technical information, like the ID. Okay, you don't search on the technical information. The content type is a technical information. It's stored and it's not analyzed. It's stored as is, as the technical information. We don't tokenize it, we don't lowercase it, we don't normalize it. It's a technical information, like the ID. ID and content type are technical informations. So in this way, when you do a full text search, it won't be used for a full text search, like the ID. The content type and the ID won't be used for a full text search. The body will be used, every field you define will be used, but not the ID and the content type. If you want to filter using a search on the content type, this is a valid scenario. What you need to do is your own query, not the past query in using the API, but your own specific query saying new search builder 
and you say with field field um, content type and the value and um, on that you will say dot exact to say it's an exact match so there won't be any analysis done on the text term you are passing to the query so it's um, you have to be specific when you do your query that for content type you don't do uh, analysis on the term you are passing to the query and you don't you don't have to expect a full text search the default one in the api to use the content type or the id is it clear nick what about removing the well because when you type in a search term and you hit search you need to remove there's a it, it turns that string to lower and then passes that to least seen and that's where the issue is mm, so you maybe need also to, but the two lower passing through uh, ideally still nothing to do with content type like no, this no, no, no. so this is wrong however it has highlighted that search is passing through if you read i think the second paragraph the bottom okay. of the second paragraph uh, or the first paragraph sorry the bottom of the first paragraph because when you use Orchard Search, your query is automatically lower, lower cased. That's no, wrong. Yeah, he's mentioning he's doing analyze instead of store, and that's better. So, uh, so I, I could agree with your issue, but this is a different one. Yeah, no, no, no. This issue is wrong. This, this I wouldn't. So, no. so I will close this one, but you might open another one with the other issue. That's fine. Nick, may I propose when you create the other one that you add a comment to this ticket referencing the corrected one? Yeah, was it 20285? Okay. Yeah, it's also the person who reported it doesn't feel disenfranchised. No, no, no that's fine. We can talk to him, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff's a cool guy. Uh, if you want to think. Okay, next. Remove the critics method in string extension class. Uh, I think it's better. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I, when I did this code with Andre. I think he did it and we talked about it actually. Remove the critics method in string extension class. Um, okay. So done a pull request for this. There is a pull request, but we need to ensure uh, it's it's tricky because first all the unit tests need to pass still. Yeah, but, pull request that it doesn't they don't all pass. Um, he's fixed some stuff, but he's also broken others. Um, so it's worth taking a look at it. It's interesting, but yeah. So for instance, uh, we need to ensure the change. Will remove the accent on and with my English keyboard um, I can type the EQ <laughs> uh, EQ okay let me see EQ EQ like this yeah, this one Where am I? So, worst case is, um, is it? I don't think it's com maybe it's configurable. Um, um, need to check if um, we can extend it with a feature, or at least make it so that we can extend it with a feature.
application initialization and throws suit in the food. Because it's white blank page in the first hit. <laughs> one we fixed the media library oh maybe not let me see Broken and one X I don't know if it has been broken, it has been fixed because I'm using it on one dot X and I'm sure lots of people are using it on one dot X. So I will say close no repro because I'm using one dot X without any issue. And this one is uh, very old. Interesting. Yep, maybe remove it. So, so we need to look at the history of the file. I think it's Daniel. It reminds me something, so I just want to be sure if it's him we talk with him about it. Uh, otherwise, I don't see an issue about removing it. Um, fixed.
What's the difference? I don't see. I don't understand the comment. CS HTML text and the DB text must match and now do not. Or is it an issue with the IT language? Damn it. Okay, I will open it. I'm. <laughs> Just someone will take it because I think it's an issue in the. Well, if it's in the, in the file, we'll change it. But I will ask him to be more explicit about the change. Yeah, British and it's written in American English. That's why. A piece of code to set a specific standard name. Uh, Sebastian, you are not presenting anymore because uh, Anton is presenting a poll <laughs> about uh, the game. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and but we still we'll, we'll stop here because the game will start. We don't want to miss it. So last bug, the last bug is about a piece of code to set a specific sender name. I think we we will close it because it's the we have changed how we send emails now. Maybe just in one attack. But I think Bertrand has done something like this. I don't know where. But he did something. I will still open it but make adding a comment. We also need to change the code to actually take that into account. Okay, done. Okay, uh, done something like what? Link crash for uh, Bertrand, can you hear? We were talking about. Someone has requested a way to add the sender in the email API. And I think some you have worked on that. So we, even in the UI, we can define uh, the, the CC or BCC and maybe the sender. Yeah, where is it? Is it in the 1.x already? It's in 1.8.1. You can uh, you have an option in the drop down that is uh, okay. We we'll see. How is it for the oh for the sender? Yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I need to to check it. I'm not sure. That's what I what I changed. Oh, okay. Any last question? Good. 
thank you everyone for joining every week we are more and more um, have a good week enjoy enjoy the games do you know yeah. I have a question cool uh, is there any more work to do on the orchard project net website since we've run out of PDF okay let's talk about it next week okay I, sounds good. and if I forget at the beginning when I define the bullet points to talk about you remind me okay and we see what we can do thank you everyone bye everyone see you bye bye you.